Welcome back. You're watching the Jacksonville History Show. I'm Harry Reagan. Now we explore the Jacksonville Historical Society archives, and our guest is Lauren Swain Mosley, archivist at the Jacksonville Historical Society. Hello, Welcome, Harry. Lauren. Hi, thanks. Uh, we never run out of things to bring people for show and tell with, uh, from the archives. This is very true. We have great archives. Yeah, we have an amazing collection there. Which is fundamentally uh, the heart of the organization, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, our organization has been around since 1929, mm -hmm. and uh, we've been uh, maybe at the early stages not as aggressively collecting, but certainly collecting since since 1929. So really um, what we keep in the archives, uh, documents, letters, photographs that um, you know pertain to Jacksonville history, it's really the core of the society in that it preserves our, our mm -hmm. history for researchers. And um, people who are doing their own research come and, uh, and do research at our archives. Absolutely, yeah, that's primarily what um, we deal with there in the archives is people calling up and um, asking things. It could be a family history question or you know, history of buildings, things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so essentially uh, we look in, inside our archives and see what we have that can help them, all those primary sources that would really give them the answers that they're looking for. Um, and of course, if, if we don't have it, which usually we do, <laughs> then we know where to, to help them go and look. And uh, the good news, the very good news, is that our archives are more accessible now. They are, absolutely. We actually just moved into um, a new building. Well, we officially just purchased um, a new mm -hmm. building, Old St. Luke's Hospital, which I have a picture of here. Mm -hmm. um, this uh, building was built in 1878, and this is the way it looks today. It actually looked a little bit different when it was originally built. There was a wing on it mm -hmm. and an additional wing that was added on. Mm -hmm. uh, but we restored the building. Well, we, the Jacksonville Historical Society didn't restore the building, but the building was restored in the 1980s, and this center part was saved. Actually, it was um, the, the champion of that restoration was Charlie Bennett. This is true. Who was a uh, congressman, a legendary congressman mm -hmm. from Jacksonville. And he, uh, I, I don't think historical preservation was uh, a big deal in those. He was kind of right. uh, out there on his own doing yeah, that. Yeah, he and absolutely we're was. We're very proud of him. Yeah, absolutely. And we, it's, it's fun. We have a, a reading room, a library with um, lots of reference books and rare books, um, you know, manuscripts, magazines, things like that. And uh, that's actually used to be his office in there because that was his um, mm -hmm. office in Jacksonville when he was a congressman. And so the, the building might not be there mm -hmm. if it weren't for Charlie Bennett. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. uh, it, and it's a, a very historic building. Mm -hmm. As you say, it was there for the yellow fever epidemic. Correct, And yes. uh, ironically, some people uh, find this very uh, humorous. Next door yes. is another building which uh, is part of the property that the Historical Society mm -hmm. now has. Yeah. It was a, a casket factory. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they're actually, when they built the second wing onto the hospital, there was a um, chute that ran from the casket factory into the hospital, so they could just really? send a casket over if they needed one, which and wasn't very confidence-inducing. No, don't no, think. I guess not. But, but uh, <laughs> yeah. it, it did, you know, serve a purpose. Right, absolutely. And that building uh, is great potential mm -hmm. for the historical society. Yeah, absolutely. Um, hopefully, one day. Um, well, uh, we already have both of the buildings, and we do use the casket factory um, to store certain things, some of the archives that are a little larger, mm -hmm. uh, that don't quite fit into the hospital, but we hope one day to make it a history center and have maybe other groups come in as well mm -hmm. um, and have uh, the third floor be like the reading room and the second floor the storage for the archives and perhaps make uh, an exhibit out of the museum, which we're working on right now, a little one inside the um, archives. So someone wanting to um, access the archives, mm -hmm. y they can come various, wh what are the hours? Yeah, we actually, uh, we're open most days from 9.30 to 5. Mm -hmm. uh, it's best to make an appointment though, just because we're a small organization, so we never know what might be going on, and yeah. I wouldn't want someone to stop by. Sure. And, so uh, um, what's that phone but number? But our phone number is uh, 904, of course, 374 mm -hmm. Or um, someone could email me. My email address is lauren, L-A-U-R-E-N, at jackshistory.com. So the, uh, let's take a look at some of your show yes, and tell. Yes, absolutely. Well, uh, um, of course, uh, going with the St. Luke's Hospital theme, we have up here behind us um, a, an old um, 
I guess, page from a Harper's Weekly from 1888. Mm -hmm. When the yellow fever epidemic occurred in Jacksonville, it made national news. It was very important. And you can see up at the top here um, a picture of Old St. Luke's Hospital. It actually was eventually taken over by basically by the city, by the Auxiliary Sanitation Committee, which was in charge of helping to control um, the yellow fever epidemic and um, used to help patients during the yellow fever. So. Mm -hmm. You can see uh, most, most people, though, during the yellow fever would have been put into kind of like tent cities. We had a Sand Hill Hospital. Um, so places outside the, an immediate building where people who weren't infected with yellow fever might go if they were also ill. So, um, so we have that picture here. I also brought with me this interesting um, ledger book, which unfortunately is falling apart. And, so. and people may notice the white gloves. Yes, uh, the white gloves. Let's talk about the white gloves. <laughs> the white yeah. gloves are archival gloves. Um, basically, we use those to protect the items so that oils and things like that from hands don't mm -hmm. get on the papers. Uh, occasionally, looking through the archives, I've seen you know, books from the 1800s, and there'll be like a perfectly clear thumbprint on it yeah. from somebody who had a greasy hand that day or something. Yep. And um, So we use the gloves. Uh, they're just white cotton gloves to help mm -hmm. protect the items. Um, but this is an old ledger that actually um, it was written in South Jacksonville which today would have just be considered part of the core of Jacksonville. Sure. But South Jacksonville at the time was basically the Hendricks area. San Marco. Exactly, yeah. out towards San Marco. Um, <laughs> and it was considered a separate city uh, in 1888. So this was actually a ledger that South Jacksonville, uh, they were keeping minutes on the epidemic in Jacksonville uh, to try and provide aid, to find out if or when it was going to come over to them. And uh, the, page, the, the minutes actually only go for a few pages talking about funding and things like that for um, help in Jacksonville, and then they stop. And that's because they actually incorporated La Villa and um, South Jacksonville and some other areas uh, into that auxiliary sanitation committee that, um, mm -hmm. that was fighting against basically the um, epidemic. And about, I would say around 400 people or so died. We yeah. have a pretty good comprehensive list of the deaths and uh, things like that. Yeah, it was, uh, we were talking about the fire mm -hmm. earlier. Yes. Um, m much more devastating in terms of fatalities right. than the fire. Right. The fire destroyed the city, but it didn't kill very many people. Exactly. Uh, we actually have a painting that we recorded earlier that should should be up here. Um, there he is. Mm -hmm. uh, this actually is a, a special painting for the Historical Society. Um, it was painted by the father of Henry Bonitho. His name, his father's name, was also Henry Bonitho. So, but the one that lived here in town was the son, and um, Henry Bonitho was one of the few fatalities from the Great Fire of 1901. Only seven people died in that fire, which was actually very good, considering thousands of people became homeless overnight, mm -hmm. um, and most of the city was destroyed. Uh, this painting is very special because uh, Henry actually died trying to go back into his house over and over again and save the paintings mm. of his father from the fire. And he was successful in saving some of them, including this painting here. But eventually he did die from smoke inhalation, and you can see there are a couple holes um, on the painting. One of them is almost perfect, and one of them is a little more jagged and kind of brown around the edges. And those are actually um, from embers from the Great Fire in 1901. Fire. Yeah, as so, he was uh, trying to run the painting out, sparks would hit I it. I see. And, uh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And it's, uh, it, you mentioned um, Henry Bonifo. He's actually kind of a bit of theme in the stuff that I bought, brought today. Mm -hmm. um, he himself, other than unfortunately his fame in dying in the Great Fire, wasn't you know necessarily a um, extremely prominent citizen. He was a tax collector for some time, mm -hmm. um, but we do have this uh, collection, the Joseph E. Lee collection. This is just a little card talking about uh, Joseph E. Lee's announcement that he is going to be an attorney, return to being an attorney in um, 1913. It's this neat announcement, kind of summarizes things that he'd done. Um, he also was, um, uh, let, let, they phrased it, interesting, collector of customs, mm -hmm. and um, eventually became um, uh, a senator as well. Um, but, but he's especially significant because he was the first African-American lawyer in Jacksonville. Mm. Um, so we actually have a very good collection of letters that he wrote, letters written to him, um, political letters, uh, it's quite a good collection that we're just now starting to tap into. So if anyone is interested in doing any research on um, early African-American history or, um, or history of law, politics in Jacksonville, it's quite a good source. And um, while I wanted to bring information on that collection for people to see, I ran across um, these two 
uh, documents here, which are just <coughs> receipts for taxes that he paid huh. um, from 1878. But there's a signature at the bottom, and it's actually um, H. H. D. Bonitho, Henry Bonitho's signature. So when he was collecting taxes, you know, it, it was for, of course, anybody in town, right. but famous people included. So um, of course we have his the painting that his father made, mm -hmm. um, but we also have little pieces of evidence of him that pop Just up a, every now and then a, in the collection. An interesting intersection. Uh, yeah, in exactly. History, right? um, another collection I brought today uh, to highlight, um, sort of segueing from the fire, is um, applications for membership in the Elks Lodge. Um, it doesn't sound like it would be too much of a you know interesting collection. Actually, I'll show this other one first, but. It's really useful for researchers. You never know what you might have in your home um, that, you know, a lot of people, they just throw things out and not think about it. That mm -hmm. could be really useful for people um, trying to do research on Jacksonville history. So these applications, they list the name of the person who, of course, is trying to apply to the Elks. And um, also, they had to have a sponsor. So it lists the sponsor, which a lot of times was a close friend or family member, things mm -hmm. like that, which can be useful for genealogy research. Um, it also asks them a series of questions about uh, religion, and um, surprisingly enough, uh, it'll ask questions about like their health and things like that. So if you can find a person in your family in the past who applied to be in the Elks Club, it's actually a really great collection to find information. Mm. But when I was looking at which ones to bring today to show examples of these applications, um, I found this was an application that was being sponsored by Henry Bonitho. Oh. So <laughs> once again, we find him popping up. <coughs> a few weeks ago, right. we weren't sure yeah. we had anything about him in the collections, and yeah. now we keep finding him. Um, but later on, that's, this is sort of a, a simpler application, an early one from 1900, with just these basic questions. Mm -hmm. But um, you can see in this later example how the applications get a little bit more complicated. Whoops. I guess mm -hmm. I should put it right side up. Yeah, yeah. And um, they actually have two additional sponsors on here, references, also things like um, where the applicant was born, where they lived in the past. Mm -hmm. I thought this was sort of an interesting example because it said the applicant was born in South Africa, yeah. which you don't often find in, in uh, early 1900s in Jacksonville. So mm -hmm. it's quite a good resource um, that we have now at the collections. This just came in a month or two ago, so very recently. So uh, we're almost out of time, we've got a, a yeah. book here that you wanted to? I do. I actually, I think I'm going to skip to okay. this little book over here okay. just as sort of a, a public message for people about bringing, not throwing things away, basically. Mm -hmm. This is a book, um, a yearbook from Duval High School in 1914. Mm -hmm. um, back then, people pretty much handmade their yearbooks, uh, unlike today. Yeah. And you can see here just the simple yearbook for one person. It's got photographs wow. of every member of the class. Um, and their signatures, a lot of people doing history uh, what research. What year is that? 1914. Oh. Um, they're not necessarily sure where their um, ancestor went to school, mm -hmm. things like that, or having a picture of them. So mm -hmm. this can be, anything in your home can potentially be an excellent resource. So we do, of course, accept donations. Um, and you can just And, and people call may us. need advice. They could get it from you. Uh, Absolutely. On, on what to throw away and what to not throw away. Exactly, because there's... Uh, you know, limited limited usefulness of everything. So. Lauren, thank you very much for oh, being with us. Thank you very much, Harry. And that's our show. Thanks for watching. For more information about Jacksonville history, visit our website, jackshistory.com, or call 665-0064. So long, everyone.